Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to this live stream where we are going to learn karate. Not really, not really. We are going to learn some serious gambits of chess. And what a nice thumbnail, guys. Did you like it or not? I'm going to ask our guest whether he liked it or not. But uh, in a bit, in a bit, first of all, a warm welcome to everyone in the live chat. And I hope that you can hear me well. Uh, and all is good. <clears throat> so our guest for today is Grandmaster Kevin Gove Ming. Uh, and he is a GM from Singapore, very, very strong. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to give you a small story, you know, at some point. So this is me and Kevin here. This is in Singapore. And the story goes something like this. Then when that when I was 22 years old, I decided that I want to uh, pursue chess. But at the same time, I had finished my CA examinations, chartered accountancy. And I was like, I want to become, now I'm already a CA. Now I want to become a GM. So I'll be the first CA and GM in the world. And everyone, I, I told this to people and I'm like, wow, this is a great idea. You know, you will be the first CA and GM. And then I became an IM, so I was like very close to my aim. Then I uh, made my first GM norm, then I made my second GM norm, and I was like, now this is I will I'll be the first one. And then all of a sudden, this is one guy in Singapore who decided to kind of beat me to my idea. And guess what? He was already a CA. He became a GM, and he's the first CA and GM in the world. Uh, it's amazing how this man has, you know, uh, managed to become a grandmaster even at the age of 36, maintaining a full time job in Lucent's Diagnostics. This is his team over there, and he's the CFO over there, and he works really, really hard and manages a professional career as well as chess career. Uh, simply tremendous. And so this, somehow this image really fits him very well, you know, he's able to achieve everything. Uh, and today we're going to talk about gambits with him. So without any further delay, let's invite the guest of today, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Saga. Thanks for inviting me to the show. Kevin, uh, <laughs> you said you, you hit the thumbnail everywhere. You want, you don't want people to see it. Also. Oh, so... <laughs> So, so when I received the link and I saw the thumbnail, um, I, I thought like, okay, I'll think about how I'm going to murder you, but um, <laughs> I'm definitely going to be you know, hiding the thumbnail from all the, from the different chat groups and Facebook posts. And then people started posting the, the screenshot of the, of the link. And, and I realized that, uh, you know, just highlighting that I'm, uh, you know, I deleted the thumbnail on purpose didn't work very well. You know, so I shouldn't. <laughs> I, I thought that, you know, you became a black belt just without trying, you would be happy with it, but uh, yeah, not really. that, that's a, that's a very cool shortcut. Like, I don't even remember where this, uh, this picture is like the hairstyle and everything. Like, where did the hair come from? <laughs> I, but I have, uh, to give your, I have to give your designer credit. Yeah. A lot you, of credit. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Abu, Abu there, good job. Uh, and also... Uh, Kevin, today we are going to do something very fascinating. We are going to look at serious gambits. And when you proposed this idea to me, I was very thrilled because, you know, there are a lot of gambits uh, which are being taught or which are learned, which are good for a few games. And then when you dive deeper into them, they can be refuted because there's always a gle uh, glaring hole in it or, you know, but today we are going to discuss gambits which kind of have stood the test of time, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, and and when I was thinking, like, um, when you propose to, to do something on openings, I was reminded of a really funny story I had um, somewhere in 2017, where one of my friends, um, a female player, Gong Qian Yun, we were both playing in these zonas. Yeah, and then uh, she was playing the female section of, of obviously, and then she asked me, um, what should I do against um, the E6 Sicilian? Mm -hmm. 
And then I say, okay, do you know what I do normally in Blitz? I will play E4, C5. Um, I guess we'll show that in a while. But let me let me get the board here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by the way, by the way, we have a few people in the chat uh, who are saying, um, "Don't expose us, Kevin." Jade, Jade, and Ch Chua, Chua is it? Chua, yeah. Uh, some of the, some of these guys are just you know when I posted the link, they started saying all sorts of you know bong clouds and uh, England gambits and. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> they have they have to look at the title of the stream. It's serious gambits, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I hate to dash your dreams, guys. These will be something which will not be as uh, exciting as uh, bong cloud, but will give you more <laughs> points than bong cloud, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so you here, were saying uh, this move, yeah. Yeah, and I said okay, you go d four, c takes d four, and you play bishop g five. Yeah, and you hope that the girl, you know, the, the opponent plays oh. knight c six and you and you win the queen. <laughs> so, so this is what we do in, in Blitz online and, uh, <laughs> and and in Bullet, yeah. Nice. You know, you know, there's a I I, I once played this against a twenty seven hundred yeah mm. on online, and after Bishop G five, he played A six. <laughs> I took the queen. Okay. And I was very ashamed. Like I was um, embarrassed. I offer a draw. Uh, he declined. declined. <laughs> he declined. <laughs> and then and, and I lost the game. <laughs> oh my god. No, he just started bulleting, you know. It, it was a bullet game to be fair. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So nice. and then I okay, I said there is actually some 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 serious uh, theory here. So be, before I go on, um the origin of this line uh and I don't exactly know the full history, but I know that the, the this opening is called the Aussie attack. Aussie. So pre yeah, presumably it's popularized by Australian players. Uh -huh. uh, that that's that's the the intuitive <laughs> definition, yeah, of the game. Very interesting. I this actually is the first time. I mean, I think I've vaguely seen it, but I don't know anything about it. So I'm very excited to learn mm -hmm. a few things today. Uh, so so let's get cracking, uh, Kevin. As we go along, I would like to tell people more about you. You know you uh, mm. and and more secrets about how you manage your work life as well as chess. Uh, not only are you working full time, you're also a grandmaster. I believe you also teach chess or not really. I I have a few couple of students here and there. So a and... couple of students and believe yeah. it or not, this guy is now going to fight for uh, the presidentship of his uh, of his country, Chess Association of Singapore, right? Or how do you call it? Singapore Chess Association? Singapore Chess Federation. Chess so, Federation. Yeah, okay. to, 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 be, to be exact, uh, I'm running for vice president. Vice president. Wow. Yes, vice president. So so we, we have a nice team and uh, yeah, we wanted to do something different for, for Singapore Chess. Apart from the fact that uh, it seems that I'm always trying to find things to do, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't believe that you are you're finding time for this as well. Uh, so this is something tremendous. How you manage your time and all of it. I would like to uh, get a peek into that. But first, let's begin with the first gambit. Uh, what what are we going to see? This one, Aussie attack. Yeah, let's let's take a look at this one. Okay. So, firstly, the the psychological impact of this line is pretty strong so if you face it online you get triggered right because you think that the guy is trying to win your queen by free move or something like that mm. and then he plays something like bishop e7 which is already a mistake okay so this was what um, my friend so my friend played bishop g5 in the game it's a serious game 90 plus 30 yeah and, and the opponent played the, you know after 20 minutes he played bishop e7 bishop takes e7 knight e7 Queen d4, and already white is a bit better, just like that. Okay, if I castle, yeah, you go knight c3, and now knight c6, you can go queen to d6, which is kind of interesting. Uh -huh. And white, uh, white intends to play long castle. Okay. And at some point, you start launching the kingside pawns, and black has some difficulties in developing the queen side. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah. And while preparing for the show, I I went I went on chess base to to try. I, I wanted to see uh, whether there are any there's any recent games. I, I was not hopeful, and then I saw that Sam Servian has been playing this for a, a while. 
Oh, Orange. with white. Yeah. And Sam Savian is uh, nearly 2650, right? Yeah. Very strong so, GM from US. And, and of course, my good friend, Junior Tay. So we have discussed this like extensively for the last 10 years. Hmm. <laughs> Most of the discussion was centered around how many times we win the queen on D8. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, and I saw that he also has games uh, in Titled Tuesday. Okay. And uh, yeah, he has a hundred percent score as far as I see. Wow, wow! I'm actually uh, wondering if Bishop e7 is not such a great move because mainly it weakens the dark squares a bit. Uh, how yes. about pushing you away with f6? Does that make yeah. any sense? F6 is uh, a very intuitive move because uh, the next next move you probably go e5 to defend the d4 pawn. Right. But it's also but it's also bad. It's also <laughs> bad. Uh huh. Yeah, that's the beauty of this line. Because the most natural moves mm. are, were, are actually not that great. So here we go bishop c1. What? Bishop c1? <laughs> yes. I thought at least bishop h4, bd2, make the move count. So, yeah, <clears throat> apart from triggering your opponent even more. Mm -hmm. um, but now, <laughs> black, black, black actually struggles to find a good move here. So, so okay, I, I, I would defend the pawn. Like, because if you think about knight c6, knight takes d4, this is just, this pawn looks weird on f6 now. So I yes. think the only move that yes. justifies this idea, like of pushing your f6 pawn, is to go e5, no? Yes, absolutely. And now we play c3. Ah, oh, Kevin. When there are interesting moves like these, if you can ask the audience to get, guess the move, that would be nice. Okay. Okay, so C3. Uh -huh. So you're you're giving up a pawn, huh? Yeah, so very similar to the, the Smith-Mora gambit, which some argue is also a sound gambit. Some argue says that it's refuted, but we are not going into that discussion, yeah? <laughs> whether, the, whether, the, whether the Mora gambit is a good line or not. Mm. Um, I, I think it's not so great, but yeah, <laughs> maybe that opens yeah, just, um, another can of worms here. Yeah, yeah you, you, you don't want, yeah, you don't want people start, start starting to hate on you. You know, like <laughs> what, are, what are you saying? You know. <laughs> okay, so take this. I think logical, no? Or what else? Yeah. So DC three, um, nice C three. So this is um, very very nice compensation because mm -hmm. of C four. Um, Black, black will have problems castling. And sometimes in in positions where you have um we have, you have compensation in the form of good light square control, you're stopping black from castling, you don't have to go so direct, yeah. So you can just prepare an attack, you go castles. At some point you move the F3 knight away and you play F4. Mm. And and you see how your opponent reacts. So Nice. Um, going going back to the position after c3, I wanted to show, yeah, so c3 here, most people I play online, they go d5. Uh, because because the main thing is that after this, you can never get in d5, so it makes sense to push it straight away right now. Yes, you're right. Okay, so I, I think taking on d5 now or what? Because your threat is to take d takes e4. Yes, that's right. So e d5. Mm -hmm. Queen takes d5. Uh, maybe you should switch the bot around to the white's perspective. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Very yeah. sorry. It's always pleasant, always pleasant to see the position from a winning winning point of view, you know? Right. So I'll start <laughs> from the beginning. You go e4, c5, knight f3, e6. And now d4, you don't really recapture the pawn, which is the main line and goes into the open Sicilians, but you play bishop g5. And then, uh, okay, not nice. This, this would happen in a bullet game if you're not careful. But f6, and now Kevin suggests this very weird move coming all the way back. And after e5 in this position to play c3. And yeah, this is where we are. And d5 is the main move. Okay. Okay, so also I, I, I'm a little bit familiar with the Sicilian Alapin. So I would like to draw analogy to a variation in that line as well. Hmm. So I think the line goes after, um, if you can start from the beginning, e4, c5, c3, d5, <coughs> e, d, e, d5, mm -hmm. uh, queen, d5, d4, knight, c6, I think, knight, f3, c takes d4, 
c takes d4, e5, knight c3, bishop b4, bishop d2. The queen is attacked now. Yeah, and bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, and e4. So this is like a common motif in this particular variation where when you attack the queen with the knight on c3, black goes bishop b4 and then pushes the pawn to e4. Ah, okay. So first because you come here, take, and then you push, uh, sorry, push this pawn here. Correct. Okay. Yes, because um, when you attack the queen on d5, it, it cannot really go somewhere because white goes d4 to d5, giving even more space, and it's very dangerous for, right. for black. So going back to the discussion, yeah, at this point, after d5, you take... Yeah, so this could be something that black wants to do as well. Um, then you go c d4, e4, knight c3. Uh -huh. Now e4 is important, guys, because if you take here, then after knight d4, once again, white has a nice position because the e6 square That's is right. kind of weak. So e4 here. Knight c3. Bishop b4. Uh, bishop b4, yeah. So, this position, like, now, now you cannot really play um, um, bishop d2, yeah, because uh, your f3 yeah. knight is already hanging. So, so, here, so take, take, yeah, and you, take, you just, you just yeah, lose just a piece. Lose, just lose a piece. That's not the idea of playing this campaign. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, we have to play knight d2. Ah, but aren't we losing a pawn here? Yeah, that's right. And yeah, I'd like to, you know, when you see this position, what do you think is the evaluation of this position? Right? Okay, good question. So, yeah. and, and is there a kind of a dangerous move here for white? There, there is, there yeah. is, but it's okay. not, yeah, it's not so obvious, honestly. Yes. Let's think it's, about it. Yeah. Guys, uh, white to play here, what is the evaluation you think and what is a good move? For me personally, I saw that knight takes e4, fails to queen takes e4, check with this knight being pinned. So I, I already don't see a way of gaining back the pawn in the position. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I do feel that uh, <laughs> there are certain things like bishop can come out here. There is a check here. There is a check this side. The queen can swing over. There's a lot of dynamic possibilities. I just have to make, make something work. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. But what might surprise you is the... It's the actual evaluation, you know, if you fit the position brutally to the to the engines. What what which, is it? Plus one? This is plus two point six. <laughs> two point oh <laughs> my god. Really? Yeah. Wow. Two point so, six. So that's like nearly a piece up for white. Yes. Yeah, if, if at the at the IM GM level, this is con this is considered to be winning. Yeah, yeah. But how? That's the question. A lot of people in the chat are saying queen a4 check. But guys, queen a4, knight c6, what's the next plan? Yeah, queen a4, knight c6 is not so... Also bishop d7 is... Yeah, just queen awesome. a4, bishop d7, and looks like black is doing fine there. Mm. Wow, plus two. So it's, it's, it's not like some, you know, spectacular sacrifice, but just... Simple just chess, huh? Yeah, just simple chess. You 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 say bishop c4 here, or bishop b5 and castle. Yeah, bishop b5. Bishop b5 is pretty strong. Wow, bishop b5 check and perfusion had said this move. Bishop b5, nice. Uh, also vision, good mm -hmm. job, guys. Bishop b5. Okay, let's let's do bishop d7 now. Try to exchange a piece. Yes, and now we go castles. So gaining, gaining time, basically, if you take here, I'll take with the knight hitting your queen and your king yep. is still in the center. It's going to be nice very dangerous. Knight c7 is threatened as well. So tactics everywhere. Right. So for example, a move like queen c5 is probably just losing because of queen a4. Mm -hmm. And now there's and... this. Also, I thought if you play queen d7, then also queen a4 looks very strong. Yeah, because knight c7 is threatened as well. This and taking this. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Mm. So he can't take. And if he takes on c3, then I think you take back and hit the queen again. 
Yeah, that's right. And queen c3. Queen c3, and now we have to think. So this is outside my preparation. Uh -huh. But it seems bad. I, I mean, bishop I, d7 and uh, maybe knight b3 or something. I, I'm I'm attracted to knight takes e4 and knight d6 check. Ooh, knight e4. Wow. Knight, <laughs> and take this and just check here. Knight d6, yeah? Looks looks very nice. Looks very scary. Like this rook coming in and this queen jumping. Queen could come here. I think this uh, might be lost. Yeah, queen d5 looks very strong as well. Yeah, queen d5. Um, king f8, queen d queen d5. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it looks. How do you stop this mate? <laughs> so nice. okay. Something to add to the variation. So yeah, this this looks. What should uh, black do actually? So according to the according to my analysis, uh, black should play a6. Uh, bishop takes d7, knight d7, and now, very disappointingly, um, queen exchange. We, yeah. Knight e4. Knight e4. Ah. Yeah, very disappointing. I know, I know, <laughs> but. <laughs> but you're you're position... just uh, saying to black <laughs> that knight d6 is just going to be killing. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you take on c3 or overall, like knight d5 is threatened. So let's say if you take here. Then maybe take and then yeah and then ninety six yes or you can go ninety six check first I guess ninety six check first as well mm, mm. not I don't think that's a, that's a clear difference and it's just very difficult for Black to complete his development because the the stupid pawn on f six because he he would love to play knight g f six at this moment where with the knights on c three and e four but he can't. But he, he played f6 on the fourth move. That the, <laughs> that's the sad part of this entire so, so 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 whenever you push your f pawn, just be careful, yeah. Like somebody said about the Dutch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Petrosian? <laughs> whenever whenever I played the Dutch, I wanted to play f f5 to f7. <laughs> <laughs> after, after a few moves, yeah. I want yeah. to push <laughs> put the pawn back. Like, they, they said there is such a such a bad opening. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I have many like um yeah many good memories of, of this this particular position. Mm. Like <laughs> awesome. Uh yeah. So bishop g5. So that that covers uh, f6 move sort of? Yeah, sort of, yes. Yeah, I should we should also see uh what happens after f6, bishop c1, e5, um, c3. Yeah. And uh, DC three, because that's what probably uh, most most uh, yeah most most players will get. But after and... C three somehow looks really bad. Okay, I, I want to see how Black fights back here. But maybe Bishop B four. Yeah, Bishop before you go, Bishop C four. Mm -hmm. With the idea of maybe Queen D five and. Threatening some things here, or just castle, queen b3 also possible. Yeah. And yeah, in the actual game online, I uh, my my opponent played bishop c5. So I think his rating, it was on Lee Chess, I believe. It's like 25, 2500. He plays the he played bishop c5. Mm -hmm. You played uh, bishop c4. I played bishop c4. He played knight e7. So quite clever. Um, stopping queen d5. Right. right. And okay, we just castle, you know, and life is good. <laughs> For black, <laughs> it's like he's again, yeah, the same thing. He would want the pawn to be back on f7. Yeah, 100%. Mm. So at some point, perhaps if black, uh, if black is desperate enough, he might play d5 at some moment. Right. To yeah, to sacrifice, give the pawn back and and see if it works out. Um right here in this moment it doesn't because of knight takes d5, I believe. And you're still stuck in the center. But it's definitely an idea that he should be thinking of, you know, throughout. Mm. So um instead the game continued knight c6 just to give 
give you an idea how the how these positions can 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 erupt for black. Okay, I, I went a3. Okay, you want to play d4? Mm -hmm. He played knight to d4. So already you make uh, two moves with the same piece is yeah, it's not not great. I play b4. No, he took on F3. Ah, he took here. Yeah. That, that yeah, which, gives you even more uh, kind of yeah, speed. Not, not the best idea. Not the best idea. I played yeah. Queen F3, Bishop D4, and here I played a very tricky move. Ah, I know what you did. I, I mean, I think I know from very little <laughs> that we are already discussing. I think you went Knight B5 because you don't care for your Rook here. Is that I don't true? care. I don't care. I have no regard um, for material, you know. Ah. <laughs> So knight b5 is not the best move in that position because here black black can play d5 to close the diag diagonal. Mm. But even here, white is white is good, you know, white is doing very well. Yeah. Um, for example, knight takes d4 here. Mm. Uh, I think it's pretty good. But yeah, he took the rook. Oh, he, he took. Oh, that's he, that's a big uh, error. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe can somebody? Let's can see. Any, can anybody see oh, how white? Oh wow! Yeah, 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 wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. guys, yeah, yeah. guys, <laughs> let's see. Don't don't give just one move. Find the entire sequence here. Uh, beautiful, beautiful checkmate incoming. How did Kevin finish off his opponent? What was his online rating? Close to twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing. So somebody in the chat should probably be able, be able to find uh, Vinayak this. Vinayak Marar, well done. Also, Saurabh XD, excellent. Safal Fazil, brilliant. Sibashnish Monty, Queen H5, maybe, but there's something stronger. Himang, Huimang, well done, Huimang. Uh, Sani Deshpande, oh, Sani Deshpande is this young girl, 10 year old. Yeah, very good, Sani, you are right. Uh, Jaden Chua, you are also right. Absolutely. <laughs> How strong is Jaden? He I, he looks like he's your friend, right? Yeah, he's in the yeah. He he joined the chess club that, that I set up recently. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So the guy the guy is very active. Um, What's the name of your chess club? So it's called Yuhua. It's a Chinese name. So it's how, my how do you spell it? Y U H U A. Yuhua. Okay. Yes. And. It's only after I set up this chess club, I realized that there are a lot of nut cases in Singapore who love chess. <laughs> <laughs> Messaging me at all sorts of hours, 2, 3 a.m., you know, just. <laughs> I didn't know these people exist, you know. <laughs> I, thought only, I thought only Indians are like that. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know Singaporeans are crazy about chess as well. Guys, I want to tell you one thing that uh, Kevin replies to all these 2, 3 a.m. messages and all. So if you want to ever get some chess advice from him, you know, I've put his Facebook link down there and he will reply, <laughs> reply much, to, much to the anguish of his family and everyone around him. He will, he will tell you what to do here. And guys, all those who said knight d6, queen takes f6, beautiful, beautiful and this must have been pretty, yeah. Uh, this checkmate. You would have enjoyed it. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. And this it was the only reason why I played knight b5. Like I, I could feel that it wasn't the best move, but <laughs> this is too too much to hope for that you know I have to try to to get this one in. But it worked. It worked. So I I posted this uh on my Twitter. Mm. And uh, Simon Williams uh, told me that he played the same gambit once. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, uh, against Boris Avrup, of all people, you know. And he won. He won. Wow. Right? And he says that against Boris, you better try to do something different, right? Mm. Don't, because don't if play... you play the main line, <laughs> Boris is anyway a very strong theoretician. So you could play yeah. something like this to just surprise him. Yeah, to get equal chances at least. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, nice. So, Mithi's Dazzling says this is known as Borden's mate. Yeah, yeah. This this is the Borden's mate with two bishops. Bo Borden's mate. Okay, I didn't yeah, know this. Yeah. I didn't know this. <laughs> but thanks, thanks for the education. I didn't know. <laughs> nice. Okay, so let's uh, go to the... Let's look at some other, some other variations, yeah? Okay. 
Um, so I, I can also say what the best defense is, you know, for that for oh, that line. Sure. But, but is is that uh, spoiling it for? No, no, no. Let's let's know what we are going to end up into because yeah, that would be very nice after. Uh, is, yeah. Is it F six or? No, it's not F six. That, that's not the best defense. So, mm -hmm. firstly, I want to say that if Black goes uh, Queen to C seven or Queen to A five, we are we are playing C three. Ah, just giving up a pawn. Okay. So, so here it's like also, a queen. and it's like uh, this Mora Gambit, but a better exactly. version. Slightly better version with the queen being committed. But okay, we committed Bishop G five as well, mm. and that's not okay. You can imagine there's no theory on this. Right. So, right. right. You go rook c1, bishop c4, and then at some point you play knight d5 and <laughs> hope that it works out. <laughs> true, true. But the, the engine should should like this. Uh... The engine, the, the engine is fine with white in this position. So the yeah, I was <laughs> to bring back the earlier story uh, with my friend. So she won the game <laughs> okay. at the at the zoners um, against a strong WIM. And then a few rounds later, I was preparing for a Filipino international master, very good player. Um, and then he surprised me with the Sicilian and E6. And I was so annoyed that I prepared the whole day for something else. I just played Bishop G5, you know, without thinking. And when I played it, I, I slammed the clock. And then I was thinking like, what have I done to myself? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why did I do this, huh? So my friend came to, you know, she was walking around and then she saw the game and then she gave me a look like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm, whatever, you know, if I lose, I lose, I don't care. <laughs> so he, um, he plays the queen if I've checked. Mm -hmm. I, I went c3. And I could tell that he was very surprised that like he spent 25 minutes already and he played the he made a bad move. He played knight f6, which yeah, which to put it mildly, yeah, it's, it's not it wasn't great. Mm -hmm. So I simply took on f6 and I played queen takes b4 and I got a nice nice position. And you are hitting this pawn here. Looks like a weak pawn there. Yeah. So ge generally, you want to put your knight on d2 to go to c4 at some point, like to target the weak d6 square as well. Nice. Hmm. Yeah, he played knight c6. Ah, oh, sorry, bishop e7, defending the pawn. I played the knight bd2. Knight c6. Queen e3, and here he made the second mistake, and it was almost a decisive mistake. Okay. He played d. He played d5. Uh huh. Oh, when he's behind development, he's still opening up the position. Uh... Yeah. I guess I guess he was thinking I have bishop pair, I should try to open the position for mm. the bishop pair. Mm. But can maybe somebody can try to find Yeah, let's try to figure out what's a good move here. My initial instinct does say that I should take on d5, but then he will take with the queen. I think pawn takes would really spoil his structure, but he would take back with the queen and be okay. So is that fine for him? Let's see. Guys, black to play, uh, white to play here. Mahendra Teja says e5. Hmm, e5, f5 maybe. Yeah. Seems like then you go into positional play, which may be good in a way for, for white, but... Yes, mm. Myth Power says Knight B3, Hemant RVSH says Knight B3, Vision says B4, Knight B3, Gizmo Girl says looks tempting, but I would think more. Yeah, Knight B3 looks very interesting though. Is is this what happened, Knight B3? Yeah, Knight B3, very strong move. Very nice, well done. Guys. Well done, guys. Well done, guys. And, and the queen needs to keep an eye on this pawn or else you'll just take it and he has to spoil his structure here. So maybe the only move is queen uh, d8, no? Yeah, if queen d8, I'm uh, long castle. Um... Ah. <laughs> nice chess. Yeah, this is gone again. Very dangerous. 
Yeah, once you get the doublet pawns, uh, I mean, sorry, once you take on d5 and isolate the d pawn, and then you have these doublet f pawns, um, it's not great. Not you, great. You know what's happening in the chat? People are asking Jaden, how much does it cost to be in the Yu Hua chess club? <laughs> <laughs> And they're going to go crazy when they hear it. Yeah? <laughs> it's a community center. So it's, you know, it's, it's meant for the grassroots, you know, for the heartlanders. So it's free. Really? It's free? Yes. So yeah. people come there and they just learn chess? They come, they play blitz. Sometimes we have classes, we have lectures. So just last, um, last Saturday, we had myself and uh, an international master Yao, we were conducting a lecture in different rooms at the same time. And we are the two highest rated players in the country. Wow. So that wow. Has to and be it's the first free. <laughs> and it's free for anyone to come and learn. Yeah, it's, it's meant to be free, yes. Oh, this is tremendous, guys. This is too good. Oh, we have Irene in the chat. Hello, Irene. Welcome. And uh, hey, Irene. Kevin, I know Irene, Irene is your good friend. Was she the one whom you helped to prepare Bishop G5? No, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she doesn't believe in this. Like, she's the... <laughs> no, she will listen to me rant about, you know, go on and on about 10 minutes and then um, I play D4. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she will do. No, 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 I'll play D4. And, uh... <laughs> but guys, all those who are not aware, Irene is... Um... Uh, one of the top players from Indonesia and also in Asia. She is a former Asian champion and a very, very strong player. She's an IM, a full-fledged IM. Uh, so thank you, Irene, for joining in. <clears throat> okay, so Kevin. Twice, twice champion of Asia. You know? Twice, yeah, two times. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. So, yeah, in the game, um, we, we don't have to go through the entire game, but he played Queen B6. I took Oh my god, look at these pawns. He, he took, I took on d5 and black has six isolated pawns. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. How many, how many pawns is that? Yeah, six pawns. Oh. Six isolated pawns. These are ugly. These are ugly. Yeah, this is not 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 great um for any any end game. Yeah. But to be to be really honest, I, I had to work really hard to win this. True, true. I mean it's one thing to yeah. get an advantage, quite another to convert it because Black will just try to defend everything and you you have to play it slowly there. Yeah, he he, he defended really well, but at the end, there are just too many weaknesses, so he couldn't hold. Mm -hmm. So I, I won the game and uh, it's two out of two men for the Aussie attack at the Zonas. Wow, wow, yeah. this is cool. <laughs> so, uh, and who was your opponent in this game? Uh, Paulo Basamina. Very, very, oh, very talented. Yes. He's a yeah. very strong player from Philippines, right? Very, very talented, very good player. And so I will, I will review what the best move is. Okay. I, 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 my, I in... think by elimination, I've come to it that... Uh, no, but still, there are two moves. I'm confused. Queen B6 or Knight E7? <laughs> one more. <laughs> oh, really? These two are yeah. not? Yes, one more. What's left? Knight F6? Oh, Knight F6, E5? Uh, h6. Oh, that should work. So, knight f6 is the best move. Yeah. But I think this is very unlikely for someone to play if they don't know it, right? That's right. And I, I told my opponent after the game that, yeah, knight f6 is supposed to be the best. As in, best as in, if you switch on the engine, it may not reflect it as the best move, but I think it gives black the most interesting play. So, okay, take, shall, yeah. shall we go e5 or not? Not really. Yeah. Because e5... So the, yeah, e5, h6. So even though it looks like what is winning a piece, but after h6, yeah, bishop h4, g5. Yeah. And you can't even and do this uh, botwinic kind of stuff because there's this check and. Queen a5 check. Yeah, that's right. Then it just drops. So it right. doesn't, doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. So actually, after 9f6, the best move again is the counterintuitive queen takes d4. And knight c6? Queen e3. Yeah. And we play this position. But OK, I have to say that black is probably doing doing quite comfortably. He's not better, but it's, it's like a normal Sicilian with white pieces in slightly awkward squares. So hmm. d6, bishop d7, and the such. You know, you just play, play like so knight c3, for example, d6. 
Uh, oh, sorry, black stone, yeah? yeah. So D6, D6, D6 was Knight C3. Bishop E7, and, and so on. And long castle, yeah? Yeah. Oh, maybe I mixed up the idea. I should play Queen C7. For, uh, A6 first, maybe, yeah. But even here, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's some ideas. A6, long castle, Queen C7, Knight D5 stuff. <laughs> Oh, mm. but, because because the queen is yeah. here, this is always a threat, guys. To come here, and if you take take, uh, the knight is attacked. Maybe knight e five. Yeah, you take on f six, and so the the engine is not going to be so impressed for white, but in a practical game, anything goes. So knight d four and f four, something like that, I guess. Looks interesting. True. But I remember that the white is not supposed to sacrifice any more material after this. He's supposed to just play combi. Ah, so just and, uh, you can even mm. play very slow chess, like let's say bishop mm. d7, f4, bishop h6. Yeah, and yeah. Maybe and... just take the queen back, or I don't know, maybe queen f2. And and mm. you are just positionally going to play, yeah, huh? like queen h4 and so on. Uh, but not. Uh, yeah, queen h4 is strong. Not g6 though. And don't tell me that you want to just save and play it so slow. No, maybe this is for, maybe no, for, this would also work. For for Blitz or for Rapid, you'll be severely you're seriously ahead of time by now. Mm. And you still have a decent position, right? Yeah, right. because if he, even if he yeah. long castles here, you can always go like this and yeah. there are some, G, oh, sorry, bishop takes. Bishop G2, the other rook goes to D1 and, and just play. True, true. So, I think it's good um, from a practical point of view. Unfortunately, if somebody, if you play too often, prepare, people prepare it and it, the game gets in the database and they search for, you know, they, they, they search for a solution um, using engines, you'll probably get a playable position. You are not worse, um, but it's not as fun as it could have been. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So very nice. So this was a great line, uh, very interesting. And all the people who are asking which country Kevin is from, well, he's from Singapore. So that's why he's going to stand in as a president, vice president of Singapore Chess Federation. Uh, but Mahendra Teja has pointed out a very nice fact saying Kevin is a seven time Singaporean champion and has represented Singapore in Chess Olympiad since 2004. And uh, the funny thing is that there's only one year that he didn't go to the Chess Olympiad. I think that was last year, right? I mean, 2018. Yes, I didn't go to, I didn't go to Batumi and I also did not go to, um, I had to come home um, in the middle of the event in one of the years, I think Istanbul 2012. Why? Yeah, there was a family incident that I had to, oh. I had to come home, yeah. Um, so yeah, I've seven, I think seven Olympiad lines. Seven Olympiads and seven time national champion. And uh, well, he's <laughs> he's like, um, would it be right to say that like you are like Vishy Anand in Singapore? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. No. Okay. But I mean, there's, that's, that's, like if you if you go my... to Singapore uh, in any any events or so, then. So, 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 Saga, you don't know that there is a very strong Indian chess population. No, not even chess population. There is a huge Indian population here. Do you don't get me into trouble with this guy? Yeah? Okay, right. okay. Fine, <laughs> fine. I do. They will they will hunt me down. And... <laughs> like Vichy is. Like... I'm just saying that you know, like you are you are right now the strongest uh, like local player in Singapore, right? Like who's born and brought up in Singapore. You would be the strongest. Oh. I am currently I'm I'm second actually. So I, I lost the national title and also on my first uh, you know first in the Singapore rankings to Tin Jing Yao. Very strong up and coming player. Okay. Yeah, he has one one GM norm rating is very close to twenty five hundred. So <laughs> I very nice. really hope really hope that he makes it soon. I also know there is this one young kid, uh, Siddharth Jagdish, who mm. is uh, who plays for Singapore. Uh, who's also very strong. He is twenty three hundred plus player and a good, yeah, good talent. Yeah, he finished second at the nationals as well. Wow. So, okay. Very, so, so Singapore chess is growing. Yeah, like it's becoming better and better. 
we we need more young talents. That's for sure. We need uh, we need to have a continuous you know talent production pipeline. I mean, I cannot hope for one GM a month, which was what India was doing for a while before COVID. <laughs> Every every month we have um, like you are reporting. Oh, we have sixty first GM, sixty second GM, and now once COVID is re- once COVID relaxes, Leon Mendonca becomes a GM. Yeah. No, like, in the in the COVID, you know, he was like the only <laughs> Indian who was active. Like the entire India is under lockdown, but there is one kid who is in Europe and who is traveling around and trying to get his GM norms. And he achieved all his three GM norms in this COVID period, you know, like in October, November, December, all this period, which is so, so he, inspiring. He was stuck. Yeah, I he was stuck. So, I, so he was stuck first he was stuck. Yeah. <laughs> and then he said, no, this is good. So I need to, you know, c- continue playing because if I come back to India, there's uh, no chance of playing. Yeah. So he's still yeah. there. He's still in Europe. He's now it's been 13 months since he's away from home, which is a lot of time. Yeah, which is great. Like, <clears throat> I mean, from that, from that point of view, because he, maybe he has to go to school if he comes back. <laughs> and then now he says, Look, guys, I really want to go to school. You know, every day I'm thinking about school and I want to, I really want to study my math and my science, but I can't, you know, it's COVID, I can't. <laughs> I have to play chess. Yeah, yeah. And well, they, it's, and, it's, uh... a, it's a great thing that he's there, but of course, a lot of practical difficulties as well for him. Traveling uh, is very <clears> difficult in Europe. Uh, things are closing down sometimes. Uh, going from one country to another is a lot of stress. They can stop you at the border. So I think um, it's great that we got one GM, uh, actually there were two in 2020, Akash and uh, Leon. Oh yeah, Akash as well, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been following, I, I, I follow chess base India all the time. I have to say that I'm amazed at the kind of work that you do. Thank you. Um, because you don't just, yeah, I mean, of, of, of course you, you cater most of your attention on Indian players, but you also take a wider look at. Yes, definitely. Around the region, around the world. <clears throat> and I have a story to tell, like, I have a student okay. who played against uh, Vaishali oh, at, yes. the, at the Asian continental. I told you, yeah, I think they are. <laughs> and uh, she's from China. Mm-hmm. And then she she lost almost move, move by move uh, in the exact same game that Pragananda played in this Karukan with H4. Pragananda versus Ravi Teja was a game, yes. Yeah, that's, that's the game. And my student called me and she never calls me after the game normally and yeah she called me and she was like i don't even know what i did wrong and i just got mated she didn't spend any time at all and i say do you know why like her brother played this <laughs> and uh, like two months ago she was what no 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 i have to see this game and then i said okay go to chessbase.com and uh, uh, chessbase.id i think um ah, yeah, something yeah. yeah and and she couldn't she it was blocked in china uh-huh. so she paid for a vpn to access uh chessbase india <laughs> <laughs> and then she said i'm going to visit this website every day <laughs> until the day i die and i will learn everything about indian chess players <laughs> Oh, that's a nice way to get a lifetime member <laughs> by, by, you know, but, but, you know, I made a video on this, uh, entitled yeah. why you must follow chess base India and, uh, <laughs> put this, this example. So very cool, but, uh, yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's always important to know which are the good resources out there that gives good material. And then you can just take a look. It doesn't need to spend hours and hours. You so, just take a look at yeah. some of the stuff and. And sometimes these things get retain your memory. So, so like for me, I instantly remembered the game. I'm like, oh no, this is going to be bad. I was like, okay, this is going to be a, a train wreck. And it cost him a lot. Like it cost her like a very serious price money. So nice. Yeah. And guys, uh, try to check out everything. But on Chess Base India, we also done an article on Kevin recently, which I have linked below. Uh, oh, it is basically yeah how he became a GM at the age of 36 years. And generally, like when I was young and I would read these stories when I was like 20 years old, I would think to myself, oh yes, I have 16 more years to achieve GM title. And I would be very excited. But Kevin, I have to ask you this question. How do you manage so many things? Like 
is there is there some trick because i know there are a lot of people in the chat who uh, have a full time job who then want to do something at chess and they really are passionate about it but they always have very little time to devote so i think i think firstly um i have to say that uh, i receive a lot of help and support so i have to state up front um from friends from many people who wanted me to succeed to become a gm so i mentioned some of these names in the article as well that um they really put in a lot of effort for me not to the extent that they you know spent hours and hours playing training games with me so i think that's that's first you have to acknowledge that uh, don't be shy to look for help mm. because uh, at some point in time uh, you're also going to be helping others like 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 yourself right like you wanted to be a gm but you wanted to help others more and that's why you didn't become a gm because you can't do this chess base in india <laughs> and then right and then and then you know train very seriously and competitively yeah and also i'm not kevin yeah like otherwise i would have done both <laughs> <laughs> i am i cannot manage both like you no but arguably i wouldn't have made it without the the the, the my, true, my friends true. yeah so so i i have to say up front that um that there are a lot of factors going in my favor as well and also my employers have been very supportive right i, I don't think they are watching this so i'm not saying this for them <laughs> but but it's true that they in some sense they also wanted me to you know to make it and then the second thing is about being uh being focused like if you really believe in a in a goal then then you don't feel tired doing some of these things so to all this again this this weirdos who message me in the middle of the night for from Yuhua Chess Club <laughs> most of you receive a instant reply you know like some of you guys like you know who you are <laughs> guys you can try this right now he's on stream you can go to his <laughs> facebook and message him and ask him a chess question i ha- i have his facebook link in the description <laughs> maybe he, he streams and he also replies to you <laughs> that's yeah that that may be a bit <laughs> a bit too much <laughs> the too too challenging for me but but i think once once you have set yourself a particular goal and then you just need to strategize around it um like for me to become a gm what is it that i've not done well which uh, yakup i got um, once advised that if you have been doing if you are doing something yes i'm reading this jaden um if if you have been doing something repetitively for for like a few years and it's not working you have to think of a different strategy um and that's why i did so i made like big changes to some of my habits like um i went on marathons half marathons yes. long runs yeah, because yeah i thought that in between you were running a lot yeah because um the stamina is really critical and you're playing this young indian boys everywhere right like i was hoping when i went to serbia i wouldn't see any indian boys because uh, most most of them prefer to go to a uh, slightly more high profile events in uh, nicer cities and then i went there i saw like 10 with their families <laughs> i can't escape i cannot can't, escape can't them. escape them right right if you if you can't escape them you have to face them so then you yeah, have to run yeah. marathons and do all that i have to run marathons to face this young indian talents you know so it is it's also important to be like ob- objective about your own weaknesses because sometimes people don't care so much they like to talk about their wins but they don't really analyze their loss losses and also figure out what can be improved right like so and sometimes it's not easy to identify these things you know i want to ask some people to tell you like what what you think you should be working at and that's what i did a lot nice, nice. yeah so strategize so even as part of my job um i remember that back in 2019 i mentioned this in the video as well i don't mind sharing again that I uh, we were in the middle of a fundraising round um it was a serious one like 20 million USD mm-hmm. and and I basically told my boss that I would be very focused on this that we no chess no nothing but once we close the deal like, do you think you can you know, give me a, <laughs> do you think we can um you know maybe give me a bit of time off um 
He says, yeah, yeah, sure. Ke- Kevin know. is smart. Yeah, he could have also said this after doing the work, but he was like, no, let me let me ask this before before the twenty million come in, and then my boss is like, okay, fine, let's do it. So, so it was funny, yeah. Like um, even when um, when I was uh, talking to the to the main investor. And they were asking me like, hey, when when is the date to close the deal? When when the when should we wire the money? And I just de- decided the date. I didn't ask anyone. I said, okay, it has to be done in October. Why? Why the rush? And I was like, no, 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 it's it's good because in the later part of the year, it's very busy for all of you guys. You know, I want to make it easy for you guys. And says, okay, yeah, sure, we close it in October. But the truth but the, is, you you had some tournaments, <laughs> <laughs> nice ones so, coming up at the end of the year. So training in November and then tournaments in December. Nice. And uh, nice. yeah, so it's, I mean, I, I did explain that I, I, I'm going to be quite busy. So they, they were quite nice on that, in that respect. Mm-hmm. So yeah, plan plan your tournaments, plan your training. Don't play tournaments without training. It doesn't make any sense. Mm. So train, plan your uh, events. Also, don't be afraid to seek for help yeah. and be very objective. I think these are the things that could be very useful. Kevin, are you getting messages on FB from people? <laughs> I, I don't dare to check it. I, 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 I close the window. <laughs> okay. But um, my, my Discord has the notifications. So I can uh-huh. see. Oh, you have a Discord as well? Yeah, the Discord is for Yuhua, the, the club. Oh. And uh, we Maybe you can send me that, that link. I can put it there. People can join that as well. Yeah, we we t- for the for the time being, um, we are trying to manage just from the members, and it's already you know ah, okay. not easy to manage. Yeah, like like yeah, yeah. <laughs> these okay. guys are yeah. Jaden is <laughs> so. Shivam Shah asks: Is Singapore education culture similar to India, where there are high expectation on academics? Okay, this is a good <laughs> question. I think we can, we should uh, dive into it, but. Uh, Kevin, can we look at the second gambit that you have on mind after one E4 and then we deal with this? Yeah, sure. E4. Yeah. So uh, let's look at the Sicilian as well. E4, C5, mm-hmm. Knight F3, Knight C6. And okay. here... <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm trying to think what gambit are you going to come up with for this Knight C6? Because the main moves here are D4, mm-hmm. Bishop B5, which is the Rosolimo. Yeah. Uh, and guys in the chat maybe you guys can think of some interesting idea here what could be a gambit idea that kevin has up his sleeve goring gambit with one or two points sacrifice um, what is goring gambit i have heard of it but i don't know exactly i think some e4 e5 uh, some knight f3, knight c6, d4, e4, c3, something like that. Isn't that da- oh Danish is e4, e5, d4, ed4, c3. Yeah, oh yeah, the two, two pawns. C3 takes a bishop c4. You give you give like two pawns. Oh, nice. Uh, Satendra Raj, Sunil, innovative designers, Vinayak Marar, Shankar T. Yes, you guys are right. The move is b4. Is that Kevin? What you are thinking of? Yes, b4. Wow. Okay. Um. So this move was shown to me when I was 12 years old by a uh, Serbian, I think he's an international master, Nikola Karakaj. So he has, he has passed on, um, but he's a very good friend of uh, Singapore chess. Like he has been to Singapore to teach many of our young, young talents before. I was very fortunate to be one of, one of them. Um, so in, in Singapore, we have like a founding father of Singapore chess and his name is Professor Lin Kok An. Ah. He's, um, he's the, also a very famous The one doctor. where you made a GM norm, right? In the, the tournament in his name. Yeah, that's right. Correct. Professor Lin Kok An. So he's a famous uh, infectious diseases physician as well. Um, but um, he, at some point, he decided to do chess full time to be, he set up Singapore Chess Federation. He got lots of funding and sponsorship and he also sponsored uh, a tournament where i played in france the i think it's the world rapid world youth rapid um disney disney world youth rapid 
it's uh, I think it's named after Kapov actually at the time. Kapov was the guest of honor. Mm -hmm. So he brought me along and then he also hired uh, Karakaj to be my coach for the event. So that was where I met uh, Surya Ganguly. Yeah. So Ganguly, Ganguly finished, uh, I think, six or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, guys, he was very tiny at the time. Like, you couldn't tell, yeah? But <laughs> he was he was next to me. I remembered him, you know. And he forgot, he has forgot, forgot about me. But so. at the time, there were all these top players who are already GMs now, but uh -huh. they, they were playing in that event. Like, Aronian played in the under 14, I think. Bakro played. Wow. Some of these guys. Yeah, but anyway, so Karakaj sh showed me this line. And um, like three moves later, I said, okay, I'm going to play this. So C takes D4, D4. So um, he can take both ways, right? Like knight A4 yeah, and he can take both ways. So yeah. let's take this, D4. And yeah, already here, again, online, uh, most people will play D5. Yes, I would also do that because the point is if you take Queen D5, the fact that there's a pawn on b4 stops knight c3 and that's why d5 becomes attractive yeah you're right absolutely right um but we have something here c e takes d5 queen d5 we go c c4 anyway Ooh, okay with the idea of um if the queen goes somewhere i can go d4 d5 attacking the knight mm. This looks dangerous, right? So I would I would take off a song. Oh, but then knight c3. Yeah. Queen f5. Yes. So queen f5 is the main move. And here many players, if in fact I got one game um where pretty strong he went queen to d8. But then you, you push. Push. He has to play knight to d knight to b8. <laughs> oh no 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 no! This cannot be good. But okay. Bishop c4. Mm -hmm. And uh, how is black ever going to develop this? Like, can you try to develop uh, black's king side? Like... Uh, knight f6, uh, g6, bg7, and castle would be my best case scenario, I guess. But exactly, exactly. That's what he did. Really? Okay. But uh, this is already known, like to me, that it, it doesn't help. So, <laughs> knight f6, we go castle. g6. Okay. So, rook e1, mm -hmm. bishop e7, and bishop a3. Ooh, man, <laughs> you stopped the castle now. Wow. Very, very ugly position. Very, very dangerous. I would I would be so uncomfortable here. I mean, I don't even know how to defend e7 here. Yeah, the truth is there's um there's there's no good defense. It's lost. It's lost. Mm -hmm. He played he played Bishop F8. Oh then Queen D4, no? Queen D Queen D4. <laughs> <laughs> With the brutal threat of taking this guy. Yep. Oh, um, but then he went knight d7, maybe. Knight d7 and uh -huh. boom. Okay, let's boom. let's let's ask people <laughs> how to boom here. Uh, why to play? Boom your opponent. Nice. Boom your opponent. That's right. That's yeah. That's a good title for this. <laughs> Actually, I just put like scaring your opponents with serious gambits, but this really is scary. <laughs> I'm I'm very scared right now. So, uh, guys, try to figure out how you're going to. Uh, play here oh I'm, I'm already thinking about sacrificing some material but oh adiban in the chat adiban says this is a joke <laughs> welcome ad coming from somebody who <coughs> wrote a course on <coughs> b3 <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> okay so but he's not it's not in the stream, so you know, could say stuff, yeah. You can you can say stuff, but AD remembers it, yeah. He will he will when know, he starts his next stream, he'll be like, oh, I, I'll tell. Oh, Adiban has found the move here, uh, but let's okay, see yeah. who else has found it. Uh, Mahendra Teja. I think it's, it's uh, fair to say that <laughs> this this sort of material is not really for AD's. Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, but AD is like, you know, this this concept of uh, but he... uh, Mikhail Tal and Bobby Fisher going to high school tournaments and trying to look at openings of young kids to get gain inspiration and then playing it in maybe interzonals and candidates and stuff like that. Same way AD is like searching online. Oh, chess based India life. Kevin, serious stuff here, serious gambits. Let me see. And then you see him, maybe he goes to World <laughs> Cup and <laughs> crushes someone with it. And he starts, starts playing it at Baikanze <laughs> or something. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> World Team Championships. <laughs> yeah, but all the people in the chat who said D6 here, maybe this is something where maybe, you are not, yeah. not finishing off your opponent the best. Maybe E6, no, here or how? Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if this is winning as well. Like E6, Knight, B5 is probably also winning, but it's not as pretty. Mm. This, this should also <laughs> yeah, win. It's, but this should right win as well. Is yeah. What Adiban said, boom, take here. And now after take, I think now you guys can figure it out. Why to play and win? How did Kevin... Who's your opponent here, Kevin? Yeah, I shouldn't. I shouldn't mention that. Ah. <laughs> I shouldn't mention his name. It, 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 was it a practice event like this one? No, you, it's a, it was in the Blitz tournament. So, okay. National Blitz tournament. And he's a good player. 2,000 over rated. Hmm. Um, very, he was like a senior guy when I was uh, growing up. So, he was one of the top players in Singapore at the time. But nice. obviously, he was shocked with this before. <laughs> And in Blitz, it's so unpleasant, yeah? Very, very unpleasant to play this. Very, yes. I, I will play this in Rapid, by the way. And maybe even in Serious Chess. Like, I, I would really? Find. Really? In, in certain situations, I, I would even just do it. Mm, yeah. I would be very depending, good. Yeah, depending on the opponent as well, yeah? So, so well done, guys. A lot of people have found this move here. Uh, Mahendra Teja, it's Prince time, being brilliant at chess, Satvik Agarwal. Being brilliant at chess. Hemant <laughs> <laughs> Great name. <laughs> Joydeep, Mohit, Mehra, Epsha, well done. Also, fantastic. Evgeny Slutskar, good job, guys. So, taking here is uh, and d6 just finishes him off because next move you are threatening to take. If he castles, you can take with the pawn, forking the two pieces, and so that is over. Cool. Okay. Yes. So, knight c6, b4. You say that taking here and B D four is already D5, yeah no D five is still the best move like ah right so we were the, looking at yeah. this 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 and we saw Queen D eight here which was not good Queen mm -hmm. A five is the correct move Queen A five is the best move and there's actually some theory in this variation in some books so it's not completely unknown by the way it's called the Portsmouth Gambit what <laughs> <laughs> what is it called Portsmouth P-O-R-T-S-M-O-U-T-H. Portsmouth. Oh. It... So it is, um, I believe it is a city in England. And I know this because it, I, I know this through football. It's a football club. Mm. So presumably some players from Portsmouth played play it. I don't know. Portsmouth, Maybe Niger Shot. Uh... We need, we need yeah. Niger Shot to, to educate this. Okay. Niger, knows, Niger knows everything. But... Okay, so I, 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 how yeah. do we continue here? Because the knight is hanging. Should, mm -hmm. should we go bishop d2? Yeah, interesting again, right? Maybe we can ask. Instead of bishop d2, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead, we should, should we go bishop d2? Or is there something else? Okay, let's see. Instead of this, guys, is there something else? You have already given up a pawn. Your knight is hanging. I get a feeling that Kevin is very, very tricky. He doesn't care for material. He's already said that. So what's a good move here? Sarthik Toshniwal, you say Bishop D2. But that's what he says. That's not how you play gambits. You need to be more tricky here. Yeah, you have to let your creative juices flow freely, you know. I, I thought of one more move. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, uh, if people can come up with that, but maybe there also it's not so clear. Chintamani Rajput says Queen B3. Mm, possible Chintamani, but then yeah, you will go. Decent, yeah, decent move, but E6, I guess. E6, yeah. and, and should then... be. 
ओ नाइस महेंद्र तेजा दुर्गेश कुलकर्णी सानी देश पांडे एवरी वन से नॉट केयरिंग फॉर द नाइट ऑन सी थ्री रियली यू डू दिस Yes, D five. Oh my God! That's And correct. Take Bishop D two. Uh, oh, just a second. Oops, I uh, <laughs> something went wrong. Uh, queen A five. Your your five. Your computer got had had a shock. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I mean can't believe it. Okay, so now you are a now you are a pawn down. You're also a piece down. Bishop D two. Yeah. So. Firstly, I think for for gambits, um, you have to recognize that if Black manages to uh, consolidate his position, and he, because what are you doing um, when you are sacrificing pawns, right? It's normally to gain a lead in development. Mm. And if you are slow in your follow up action, and Black starts to bring all his pieces out, it doesn't. That means you it loses the purpose of the of the gambit. So you have to try to keep the energy going, put the opponent under constant pressure, then the the potential of the gambit, you know, might pay off. You know, so if you make a move at bishop d two, it's fine. It's not a bad move or anything. But he he goes e six and you know knight f six bishop d four, and and um, yeah, you might end up just just being a pawn down. So, so you are like, if I have given one, why not give another one? D five, and open further lines up. Bishop That's D two. Right. By the way, we have a super chat from Joy Datta, who you know, very regular follower of the channel, who says, "Amazing stream, Sagar. Kevin radiates lot of positivity, and I'm learning some cool trick tricks." As Kevin said, some of the moves are boom for the opponent. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So, thanks, thanks for the nice comment. Keep the super chats coming, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so queen a three or queen b two? I'm just trying to get my queen away because I know that queen c five also is possible. Queen f six is also possible. There's so many moves to look at. Yeah, which is also a very good thing when your opponent has options. He has to think which one to choose. Yeah. So normally in. Uh, Uh, on the internet, they they will play queen to f six. Mm. We will, and then after you play d c six, b c six, you are a pawn down. Ah, uh, two pawns down actually. But um, your pieces are you have a lot of, um, open files and diagonals. So after after capturing on c six, b c six, rook c one. Um. Believe believe it or not, the com the, the computer is giving zero point three or something like What, that. What really? With yeah. two points down. With two points down, which probably means the position is just winning. Right. This is so. So what Kevin is saying. Let's try to understand that, guys. Mm -hmm. The computer should ideally give minus two here, and minus two means black is two points up. But computer is giving plus zero point three, which means that actually. Uh, if the computer assesses it as better for white, humanly it should be very difficult to defend such a position. Very yes. interesting. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Okay, we can so leave this, it at that, right? Because there, yeah, there this, is. Yeah, already this position. Yeah, you just play bishop c4. You know, castle short. Some bishop c3 at some moment. Just very easy, very easy position to play. Rook to e1. Yeah, In most most games I I play online uh, don't end up well for for black. Okay. So like they will play e5 and I will play with just c4 etc. Mm. So going back to the position after d5, there is a theoretical refutation written in many books. Oh, to, believe it or not. To, uh, yeah. So a good move for black, huh? Yeah, like believe it or not, you know. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know what what it would be. I, really? Uh, you have seen no, this? I, no, I've not seen it. I'm just checking now. <laughs> Is it ninety five? Because if you take, then I can take on c three with a check and then pick up this guy. <laughs> yeah, knight knight e five is a move that uh, that has been played, but um, but now <laughs> bishop d two is very very dangerous now. Bishop d two. Oh no. And. Uh, I, 
because now there's an additional threat of bishop d5. Say after knight takes f3, queen f3, and it becomes uh, really dangerous. I think. Yeah, you, you give a check here, next move you'll just get your king up. I mean, look at black pieces. They are, this entire uh, thing, Kevin, the entire stream that we are doing is a lot about giving emphasis on development for, yes. for pawns, yeah? Yes, for uh, in exchange for the pawns, you gain a few moves in advance, right? A few, I think somebody once said, a famous player, was it? Uh, I'm not going to make any guesses, but uh, definitely a, uh, there was a very famous quote like, um, a pawn is worth two tempo or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I maybe think it's also maybe. good. Yeah, maybe three. It's, sure. it's also good for, I think, for young players to develop their attacking instincts because I believe that uh, it's easier to, uh, to convert from a hyper aggressive player to someone, to something more positional than the other way around. What, what do you think? I, uh, I, I, I I just regret not checking such lines when I was young. The first uh, opening that I learned was knight f3, g3, bg2 castles. <laughs> and that just set the tone. Yeah, like from there, po that point onwards, uh, playing these gambits and all became difficult. So you are right. I mean, to maybe get positional play later could be easier uh, if you are tactically strong when you are young. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong in being yeah no very, it's, it's yeah true. there's nothing wrong but just that uh, if you want to learn as many aspects of the game um, and if you want to do a switch say from d4 to e4 in your later years my my theory is that it's a lot more difficult as compared to e4 to d4 right right yeah true. so that's that's just my take so I think it's good to encourage fierce direct aggressive play at a very young age. So D5 has a reputation, you say here, uh, supposed yeah. reputation in the books. Supposed, supposed reputation. Mm -hmm. Is it to play E6 and Bishop B4? Yes, mm -hmm. E6, very strong move. Very strong move. Um, also the top choice of the computer, um, written in many books. But um, uh, I have to credit my friend, uh, Junior Tay, once again, for okay. showing me his novelty. And I'm oh, gonna let, let's it. let's think. There's a novelty here. Uh, let me check if it's uh, it's no longer it's no longer a novelty. It was played. Yeah, it has been played. Unfortunately, I can check the live database here. Yeah, there are four games being played. No, there are on the live database there are twenty <laughs> thirty three games. <laughs> okay, there are 33 games because of all the, I think, uh, the correspondence games perhaps also added there. Yeah, so. the names are a little bit uh, unfamiliar. Yeah, correspondence games. So. Yeah, okay. So I, I'm thinking, uh, what is the move here? Let's take on C6. Now we're getting the knight. So let's take it. Yeah, if you take it, Queen... Uh, bishop b4 all right yeah which is which is really strong now and i remember like i analyzed this we, we were trying to analyze this position back in the days where there are no computers just trying to find a way to get interesting play not just to survive this but uh, in reality this position is maybe losing this is losing so maybe d yeah. c6 is a bad move yeah because of bishop b4 Okay. Uh, so pretty, let's uh, let's ask pretty, the people. Pretty strong here. Yeah, bishop mm. b4, d6, bishop b4 is strong. So guys, what would you play here? Um it's a really difficult move, by the way. Okay, I, I, let's I, I, feel, I, yeah. I, I think uh, the chat has good players here. Let's see if you can find it, guys. Here's a challenge from Kevin. Joy Datta says on a lighter note, during now my root my now routine weekend games with Flashbin and Siddhar gonna hit them with gambits as he's not here right now i will be the student who doesn't share notes to score more in a test nice nice <laughs> oh a lot of people are saying d6 that, that looks very suspect guys because d6 your c3 knight is hanging and then you might just be a piece down unless i i'm missing some boom variation by kevin there 
ओके सात्विक अग्रवाल से बिशप बी फाइव ओके मेजोरिटी वॉन्ट प्ले बिशप बी फाइव But then bishop b4 still. Yeah, still bishop b4 is a huge problem. Now that the b5 bishop will be hanging as well. Yeah, like this, this guys, and then if you take here first, you get a check. So it's not, or maybe, yeah. And then what do you do? Like bishop d2, he'll just take and exchange twice. Ha. <sighs> And what's the move here? What's the move? Queen D two, no, come on. So B one. And look at look at Kevin's patience. Yeah, he's not even revealing the move. He's enjoying himself there. He's like, I know this move. Rook B one, really. Oh, by the way, Nurhan Hafiz from Singapore has sent amazing stream overall. A lot of insights and ideas. Thank you. Yeah, he was hoping that I will cover the bomb cloud. <laughs> <laughs> so just to throw me, he came to the club because I was very dismissive. Obviously, yeah, I said that uh, unless your Hikaru don't play it, and then he came to the club. He played it in one game, and then. I could hear people like screaming in the background, you know. When I I was playing a blitz game as well, I could hear people at the back like, "What is this nonsense?" You know. <laughs> so he was just doing it on purpose, you know, just to mm -hmm. round me up. <laughs> so ha so Hafiz will want to play King D two here because. <laughs> Guys, think of something that Kevin would say. Okay, Kevin, has anyone given the answer until now? I saw, I saw one. Uh, Only one. Yes, I saw somebody suggested. I think. What is it? Knight D four. Someone said. Someone said Knight G five. D one. Yeah, Nimit Nimit Sharma, got it. What is it? Well done. What Queen D. Queen D two. Queen D two. Oh, I I called it out, but I never thought that would be the right move. <laughs> wow, Queen D two. Because it looks completely insane, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. Firstly, um, you're afraid of Bishop B four, and then you put the Queen on this along the same diagonal. Yeah. So it doesn't look any it doesn't make any sense. It seems, but there is a very deep idea here, and and it is that after you go Bishop to B two. Mm. There's an immediate threat of playing a three, a three. Oh, and basically, if takes, then take hitting the queen and also g seven pawn. Yes. So sometimes these ideas are very easy to to miss because um, you're always focused on one side of the board. It's very important to uh, increase your vision of the entire board. So even things going on on the king side could suddenly appear relevant. Hmm. So after bishop b after bishop b4 bishop b2 yeah so um and here there are two moves of black um e takes d5 and uh knight f6 <laughs> okay let's say if i take the pawn e takes d5 i believe you will go a3 correct a, yes a3 and now the bishop has to go somewhere yeah so If bishop d6, there is a problem. There's a problem there. Oh yes, guys, what's the problem here? Bishop d6. What do you play? Yeah, 
then you will get this quite often. Like if you get even get that position in Blitz, most people will play Bishop D6. Mm. Nimit Sharma, good job. Huh? Queen D2 and Bishop B2. But yeah. now you have to figure out what to do next. Oh, I can see that there's a double attack coming in, but somehow that very... Ah, yes, 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 it's working out. Yeah. Okay. Mahendra so, Teja. Says, Knight B5. Knight yeah. B5. Well done, well done. Good. Well done, well done. He has been really spot on with the suggestions as well. Huh? And also very important to take care with the Knight. Because if King <laughs> takes, then there might be a check here and King F8 perhaps next. Yeah, and then King F8. Um, so knight, knight takes d2 is very important um, and then there's a double attack and also on... then uh, there is g7 and d6 hanging and if you play bishop e5 then after take take and knight c7 you win yeah. this room. very cool very cool. position force apart wow so so instead of bishop d6 they are normally playing bishop e7 mm -hmm. uh, knight takes d5 then in that case Queen d2, knight takes d2. And I think this position, this position is very promising for white. Um, in the sense that uh, okay, you're attacking g7 and then you have some uh, some ideas on the queen side as well. So yeah, this is a, definitely this a is possible a big line. Threat. And I think you go same bishop c4, maybe castle or castle long, some and you have freer development. Yes. Also, bishop b5 is an idea. Hmm. I think, objectively, black should be able to defend this position. But uh, white is not worse. I think that is something that we, it would be quite quite pleasant to... If you play a variation with many tricks for opponent to go wrong, and in the worst case scenario, you are not really worst, then, then it's... Then it's, it's a good a idea. Good, practical, like. practical weapon. Yeah. Correct, correct. So for example here, King King F8, I think black is probably fine here. Yeah, but bishop b5, and then the game goes on. Right. And again, in rapid or blitz, you'll be way ahead in time. And even in standard chess, you know, you could go wrong as well. Guys, all those who are uh, finding some lag, just refresh. It's it's fine. Uh, things are moving pretty well. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is done. Uh, and you had another move here, knight f6. But yes, I think uh, a3 again or no, a3 maybe then bishop c3, bishop c3, queen d5. Yes, that's the idea. Yes. So now g7 is no longer defended. Mm. Uh, sorry, it's no longer attacked. So, so okay, firstly, the idea after knight f6 is that uh, d takes c6 is met by knight e4. So, ooh, ooh. I thought bishop e6, but uh, just knight e4 is crushing, huh? Yes, 94. Um, and now, this is the most attractive position. We are going to get this position uh, that's that's the most fun. Sorry, D takes C6 instead of D takes E6. Okay, I take here. Ah, and right, now, right, right. You want a piece. Oh, but there's 94. Yeah, and now, what okay. to do? Okay, what to do? <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Uh, guys, try to figure out because you won a piece here, but you're already down a pawn. And if you take on e4, ooh, you can take on e4. God. Let's see, let's see, let's see the chat if someone can find. Yes, Nimit Sharma says the best part about this is that you don't get into a bad position even if black is prepared. Yeah, that's the idea of this entire stream. Serious gambits. Where you... The worst thing that could happen is equality or maybe very small. Minus where there's always play. Not like minus 2 or minus 3, which then you cannot try it anymore. Mm -hmm. Epsha Kashyap with Jadav uh, deal with Devil says uh, C takes B7. We have Sani Deshpande. Who says bishop b5? Ooh, very interesting. Sani's uh, suggestion. Mahendra Teja also says bishop b5. Shubham Yadav c takes b7. So there are uh, c takes b7 and bishop b5. These are the two moves where people are a little bit confused. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these are logical moves. Uh, CB. Uh, <laughs> so they are wrong. 
very, very logical. I have to say, like, I was, I was trying to think like what is wrong with their moves, but actually it's not so. Like, I have to work hard to find a reason why this this. No, but CB seven just bishop B seven, no. Yeah, just bishop B seven and the pin continues. Yeah. And uh, if bishop B five check, you move the king and. But now you can even take, I guess. Ah, no, not really. I think I could play knight B5. Ah, no, no, that doesn't then, work. Uh, that doesn't yeah. work because then you bite is just a piece up. So yeah, I have extra piece there. Maybe just, so just king F8. King, king F8, yeah, king F8, and and then B5 becomes a a problem as well. And this continues here. Okay, so. What's no no not c7 cannot be the right move guys c7 your queen is hanging on d2 queen c2 maybe just knight bishop c3 or knight c3 so uh, oh knight e4 why why are people not wanting to go for this line you don't you have three pieces like maybe this yes, no no there was uh, somebody who mentioned yeah uh, Mahindra Teja. Mahindra Teja, Prachi yeah. K, Nikita M. Nice. Yeah. So is that the move? Yes, knight takes e4. Beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Give up the queen, take, and maybe that f is. f takes. But castle now looks. Yeah, and then we leave the pawn on c6 and we do something like uh, bishop c4. Or something, and then we play this position with three pieces. Wow. Yeah, and how how you, you know how often do you get this it's opportunity? Beautiful, right? beautiful, yeah. Uh, or bishop e two, maybe castles bishop e two is yeah something like this. And I I wanted to say a little bit about the evolution of chess engines because I think um back in the days when uh, my friend when Junior showed me this variation and when we used the engines to check the line, yeah, that that's how. That's how free we were, you know. We were we were researching the variations like this. That's why it took, took me so long to be a GM. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and uh, I remember that the engines were favoring black mm. substantially, um, probably because of the the material advantage, right? Like one pawn and and something like minus point seven, minus point eight, quite a quite a significant edge. But now, if you feed it to the engines. Um, especially these neural networks who mm. can mm. who can find uh, compensation uh, in more human ways, they are saying that it's zero zero zero. Wow. Yeah, this position is zero. Is is all zeros. You know? Which so, which according to your logic should be very very attractive for white. It's uh, yeah, or maybe just completely winning. You know, that's <laughs> <Completely. laughs> just, just play, man. I don't want to uh, <laughs> take such a risk of saying completely <laughs> winning, but yeah, it's attractive. Oh, AD will love this position, right? Like yeah. for sure. Like Adiban, this... yeah. I'm sure yeah. he's going to watch all of this and fight at some <laughs> event. Yeah. So, so the idea is that um, you give the pawn. So after B C six, you play. Uh, sorry, Knight F D two. So Bishop D two, Knight F D two, castles Bishop B two. And let's say B takes C six, castles. Oh, and now you're worried about uh, F5. F5. Here. Uh, yeah, here it's about trying to target the squares. So, for example, D6 and E5 are pretty attractive squares to, to put some of the pieces. So, for example, Knight to C4, I think. Aha, Knight C4. And then Knight E to D6. Oh, this might be horrible. Like, let's say this. Maybe even uh, Bishop E5. Bishop E5, yeah. <laughs> oh, and then this knight comes. And then this. Oh, this, yeah. this would be lost actually for black. Followed by F4. Yeah, the. You get you get to bind the position up. Um, uh, and it, it, this can be very unpleasant. So, yeah, F. Yeah, F, F5, knight C4. So it's not easy for, for black to, to even find a good move. Maybe Bishop A6. I remember, I think I, and I analyzed that move. So already, this is what? Something like 13 moves, yeah? 14 moves into the game, to, wow, into the 15, line. 15, 15. Uh, 15 moves. And uh, we, we analyzed this quite deeply, as you can see. Amazing. 
no right, wonder yeah. you are good at openings yeah this all work when you were young actually came comes to good use yeah because actually from uh, even when already i was familiar with fritz i think that was the popular engine at the time even during those days i was already understanding that it's not just about evaluation like you should look at the position and see if uh, okay if black is much better in a position but the line is insane you should just try to play it. right right yeah because pe people don't play like engines yeah yeah so bishop a6 knight b3 was the move yeah that's yeah this was this was something and I'm then like, i'm like kevin is now going to end this line but every time he's like two moves <laughs> deeper let, let's finish this game let's let's solve chess entirely now <laughs> <laughs> we don't stop yeah so it's, so yeah and i think yeah queen b4 bishop a6 queen e4 and that's it i like it's just good for i think it's pleasant for white nice two nice. bishops so yeah this is it um the line with knight c6 okay there i i i bet if we turn on the engines now to try to find the refutation. There will be refutations for this. Like there will be a refutation as in the maybe a better line than this one. Mm -hmm. But for the longest of time, even Wesley so played this E6 Bishop B4 stuff. Uh, one like, second. This one, you, yeah? Yeah, if you search the, the database, I'm pretty sure Wesley played once, like E6. So here D5, I have, I have a database here uh, and black Top guy, Arthur Kogan. Uh, you don't. I, I don't. I don't see his game here, but I'm. I'm really sure that he played. Um, he played this e6 move once. Uh -huh. That's how book up the guy. The guy was at oh, the very also young age. Oh, Arika has played. Oh, I mean, this has been played by many strong players. And I can see white players. There are all these. Um, how do you put it? These dangerous. Attackers like Bernardski, Garev, yes, Delgado, yeah. Bella. Uh, you know, these these GMs who are very, who love to play gambits or, uh, you know, aggressive chess. Yeah. They like, they play this way. Cool. So, uh, so I think, of, of course, we are not trying to cover the entire variation, but I, you know, at least uh, you guys get a feel yeah. of the kind of lines that I grew up playing. And then at some point you have to switch to a more mainstream stuff, but I hope this at least builds your attacking instincts, your the, the feel of the pieces, how you coordinate them, um, into a harmonious attacking unit together. That's Amazing. that's a lot of thing. Yeah. Jaden Chua says thanks for the nice stream, Kevin and Sagar. Just curious, are the lines that you showed at the start in your Sicilian Bishop G five book? Yes, I would like to tell people that. Uh, Kevin has also written a book on the opening. What is it? It's on the Sicilian, right? Yes, it's on the Bishop G5 night off. Ah, so this uh, is not, was... not this Bishop G5, what is your at the start? Yeah, this is not, it's not Bishop G5 on move four, but yeah, it's this one. He's written it on one of the sharpest lines. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love this line. Uh, I love this line until they came up with all these new ideas with Knight BD7 and I also think this is one of the best openings to, to teach um, young players because it's uh, very aggressive. They have great attacking concepts. You play f4, queen f3, you long castle, you go for g4 and uh, big kingside attack. But uh, yeah, these days with all these poison pawn variations, yeah, it's not, not as fun anymore. But okay, I, I believe there will still be new ideas in this variation and yeah, who knows, maybe there will be a second volume coming up. <laughs> Amazing. You know, Kevin, we've been discussing this for over an hour and a half in how these openings. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, <clears throat> I believe that there are a few more ideas that you have uh, in terms when it comes to E4 gambits. But if, you know, guys, you enjoyed this and if you learned from this, then maybe you can write here or in the comments and we should invite Kevin again for, for another stream because this is something which I personally learned a lot. Uh, I think Kevin, it was, it was amazing. 
these all gambits the way you sacrifice material the way you play for initiative the way you develop your pieces it's just fantastic thanks thanks sure of course i'll be happy to show some of my crazy stuff yeah but um, you know and underneath the craziness there's a certain logic and uh, flow uh, in the way the, the pieces are mobilized you know so yeah i hope uh, you guys enjoyed it yeah joy datta says amazing learning new perspectives what 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 would be one more line uh, kevin if like next time you come what would it be uh, the gambit line <laughs> okay so after e4 e5 so we we need to cover oh, other lines, e4 yeah? e5 oh. <laughs> okay so for a while and there are so many books written on e4 e5 like yeah. so many crap yeah. so all these lines are no longer that, that fashionable but for a while i've been playing knight c3 okay in this position and you could see on the database that ferruja has been playing this really frequently mm -hmm. on the internet mm -hmm. and there are two moves here knight f6 and knight c6 right. and after knight yeah and uh, the approach is similar we are going to try to play f4 knight f3 and get a kingside attack Oh wow! Okay. So, after f four, we we won't cover this in depth here. But the the strongest move already is not easy for somebody, let's say who didn't know who are listening to this. You know, if I'm an e four player, e four e five player with yeah. black, if someone played this against me, my first reaction would be to play d five here. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's not the best move. Yeah, d five is the best move. Yeah, right. Ah, it's it's best. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. But there will also be many players who play d6. These, yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Like like uh, King's Gambit declined. Or or yes. they might even take this pawn. Yeah, taking the pawn is something that a lot of players will do. Correct. They will, Correct. Because they remember King's Gambit, you take the pawn. Yes. But, but here it's huge, not good, right? It's a huge difference. Like e5. And <laughs> it's already big trouble for... Huge trouble for black. Mm -hmm. Maybe even losing. Just oh. d4 next, and then oh, f4, f4 oh. and knight knight g8, knight f3, something like that. Oh yeah. And there's an opening trick already. Like I I played it a few times. Uh, black plays d6. Yeah yeah okay. We go um, queen to e2. Mm -hmm. And after queen e7, knight d5, and resigns. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That is painful. That is painful. The queen can't stay on the e file because of this fork. And if the queen has to move, then e d six and a check. Yeah. And you can even be annoying after queen d eight. You can play knight takes c seven just to be annoying. Uh, <laughs> very nice. So, so yeah. Okay, this this variation at best is equal. Black equalizes quite quite easily, I think, if he knows the theory. Mm. But it should work to a certain level. Um, be any, you know, maybe up to 17, 1800, I think it's, it will be quite a useful weapon. And even, at, and even above that, I think some players will struggle against it. Because they don't study this as much as, say, against the Rhino Pass or against the Italian. Right, right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if I know, let's say, 20 moves of theory in the Rui Lopez, maybe 15 moves of theory in the Italian, here my knowledge is as deep as three moves, perhaps d5, yes. and that's all. They they know d5. Yeah. But after after f takes e5, knight takes e4, yeah, and then there are a few moves like knight f3. Yeah, and the um, game continues, no, and that's the yeah. point of your suggestions, uh, serious gambits. That even when black plays the best moves, the game still goes on, and uh, yeah, anything can happen. My my personal favorite is d3 instead of knight f3. So that's. <laughs> Uh -huh. I've won. I've won many games, even against good players. But but then I mean, just the, this my uh, thing. But just take take and bishop e seven and castle. Does that not give black a good position? Yeah, we can go knight f three and then d four. As uh, at some point, bishop d three. So we have some ideas. Right, um, right. Sure. Bishop d three castles queen to e one queen to g three. You know that sort of thing. Suddenly the pieces gravitate towards the king side. Yeah, and an interesting position is uh, mm -hmm. arises, right? So black black needs to know exactly what to do, uh, and I can I can of course show that. 
Pranjalya Tiwari says, this is a wonderful stream, loving it. Anirudh Kote says, I'm trying this right now. <laughs> a lot of people are, you know, the <coughs> thing is people uh, and the very nice thing is they learn something and these gambits, what you've taught are so uh, kind of on move number three or move number four or this one on move number three that it's very easy to apply them. Like you may be able to apply it immediately. So Mahindra yes, Teja agree. says we need part two. Fahad Haid <laughs> says it was great. It was so exciting and amazing learning of chess. Shubham Yadav. Fantastic. So people did uh, enjoy this. And guys, as promised, if you play some good games in these lines, please send it to Kevin uh, <laughs> on, on Facebook. Also follow him on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, he's quite active there and you know he's he he puts up stuff uh, interesting chess stuff non chess stuff sometimes also he puts up things related to his research uh, about his company and everything so you can be <laughs> you can stay abreast with that as well and kevin uh, thank you so much and wishing you uh, the best in your endeavor of becoming the vice president of singapore chess federation that's a new kind of a game that you will have to fight a yeah? new uh, sort of uh, off yeah. the board off the board new better we need new strategies it's the same it's the same you know it's the same yeah same same old <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much thanks very much for inviting me and uh, thanks to all the viewers and uh, the active participation as well yeah great it was fun and kevin uh, we do part two uh, soon whenever you have time yeah, sure. Let's fix something. Okay. Take care. Yeah. Happy to do it. Bye. Thanks very much. See you. Thanks very much, guys. See you. Guys, that was Singapore GM Kevin Govey Ming. What a likable personality. What a wonderful person. And so much fun learning the gambits. Yesterday, we had one D4 with Armin Yuhas. Uh, which was also very revealing and very interesting positional lines and stuff like that also some aggressive lines he suggested but today's session was like hardcore calculation trying to play with activity going all out against your opponent enjoying it tremendously and this is the best part about you know what i do at chess base india with these streams i myself learn so much uh, and as you guys rightly pointed out you should apply this as soon as possible and I'm going to do that as well. Uh, Joy Dutta says, Aaj bullet stream hoga kya? Oh, I have to ask Amruta if she's up for it. I'll ask her if that is happening, then maybe we will come. But I'm not so sure. Siddhan Singh, wonderful stream, learned a lot. Shubham Chavan, Kevin OP, Satyanan Subhash, great vibes. Um, Epsha, it was fun. Thank you for the stream. Yes, guys, please like the stream. Also, yeah, we are closing in on 580,000 subscribers. So do subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, Joy Datta, thank you for watching this. Jaden Chua, it was beautiful. Thank you, Jaden. And keep uh, pestering Kevin. I'm, I'm so surprised that they have a free community club over there where people can go and play chess and against one of the best players in the country superb superb and that's how you promote chess and that's how you make it more popular it's just amazing okay guys take care and see you soon bye bye